hello and welcome to let us farm so uh, today we shall we shall be talking about a video i have posted on uh, i think i posted this video on facebook and we had many reactions for it but i'm here today so that you know we talk about it so what do you think would have caused this massive death in uh, this catfish farm so you know i want us to review it understand exactly what happened and what leads to this so i'll be doing this time to time bringing up some videos that uh some people sent to me so that you know we could review it and find out exactly what happened and prevent it from happening again now like i always say if you also have your problem all you need to do is just do a video of this problem send it to me so when you send me this video i will be able to help you solve this problem free and i will also be able to use the same thing and teach other people how to also avoid the same problem so that it doesn't affect them now remember all these things we are doing it's free of charge so try and stick around to understand totally what we're saying on this video and i'll be right back watch this video to explain it more welcome back so the video you watch now they were actually sent to me by this catfish farmer now the size of the pond is five by ten and it's not hundred inside but now the problem is that the fishes they keep dying and what could be the reason why they are dying so you see some of the fishes are tumbled up and everything now let me start with the size of the pond first of all a five by ten feet pond with a three feet deep um water with the water level three feet high or what that pond is supposed to take is 70 so you actually were stuck with pond with 30 but the 30 is not the reason why you have this death every day yeah there will be deaths for overstocking because you know the problem is this when you stock the fish the first time you think that you know nothing happens because they are, they are too small to you they are too small they are not dying and all of a sudden boom this fish start dying so sometimes when this happens you know the result of that instant constant death starts to worry us and you'll be like what's going on what's happening some people get to the point of saying maybe my enemies are but this is not really about enemies so what could be the problem now like i said the first is overstocking but overstocking will not make it to be like this as it is now if you look at that pond critically you see that the water in that pond doesn't look good uh we don't need to deceive ourselves the water looks it looks muddy even though the person will tell you no that is a new water but now here is management situation the water in that pond is not well managed so for me what you do is reduce the stock in the pond though many have died so definitely the stock may have been reduced but you reduce the stock don't allow it to be more than um that don't allow it to be more than 70 so even if it's more than 70 it should be more than like two or three or five max so when that is done you can put the other ones anywhere but i know from this debt they may have been reduced to what they're supposed to do next is the water management make sure that you change your water every two days there's no point when you are told to change your water every two days you just for some reasons decide that you can't meet up changing water like i said if you don't have water to change every two days and you are using surface ponds please please it's not like maybe i don't want you to do the business but the thing is that the business actually decides on its own how you're going to run it so if you cannot be able to meet up with some of the demands of the business that's going to be a problem your fishes needs every time to have fresh water so when you don't change it for two days it's getting another 24 hours there are issues there could be disease outbreak the funny thing is that one of the sickness uh, one of the fishes may be contaminated because of the water problem and then give out whatever is the sickness on it to others and all of them will take the same water because they are within the, the same circle but imagine if you change the water every two days and one has a sickness and gives it out on the from in the water for others to pick up and then you change the water what happens is that you've removed that sickness from the water but this is these are the concepts of all this is but some of us you know we don't understand it we don't want to understand it you just want to think of what you have in your mind which most times they are never ever 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 correct 
So like I said, the issue here is water. Water management. Change this water every two days. Make sure the water here is three feet high. And the worst of all, when your catfishes die, don't allow them. Don't keep looking at them floating there. It's not good. When people like us, when we initially started, when my catfishes died, then sometimes I used to be like, okay, let me leave it and see if other fishes will eat it. But the bad thing is that the longer these fishes stay on the water, remember, the water now flows into the fish and flow out. So let's say the catfish has a sickness that killed it and it's a transferable sickness. Now, when the water flows in, it washed out that sickness that killed the catfish and flows out and then the other fishes in the pond drink this water that flows out and can get infected. So whenever you come to your pond and you notice this thing, the first thing you do is scoop out all those dead catfishes. You don't need them to be there in the pond. Scoop them out so that you don't run into any problem that may uh, occur later. When there is another situation in this particular pond, you know, every when every when situations like this happen, all of us we are, we appear to all do it very well. That you don't know why it's happening. Another thing is, how do you feed your catfishes? You see, when you scatter fishes feed on your pond, and your fishes don't eat all these fishes uh, uh, feed, and this feed goes down and dissolves under the pond, this issue can happen. Your feed has a composition of many feed uh, addictive in it and it has some mineral composition and when these things are not ate by the fishes they go down the water they dissolve in the water so they give out sometimes you see things like oil sometimes you see the color of your pond change so this feed actually give out this the excess that is poured inside and it can be choking you know when these things now affect the water color the water quality it can be choking to the fishes People that don't notice this thing mostly are people on eating pond. Reason why is that your eating pond has its own natural recycle system, which happens every night when the natural oxygen system in the soil actually recycles the water. So with that, most times you don't notice it on the eating pond, but that's not to say that it's good to waste your feed on the eating pond because you have your economic loss when doing that. But on your concrete pond or your tapolin pond or your rubber tanks, these things dissolve and they are still retained inside that same place. You don't have any natural activity going on there. So that same thing is retained and then now become toxic to the fishes when they are too much in that same water. Please, if I'm, if I'm going more than what you can understand just ask me in the comment section. I'll be able to break it down for you to understand. So that's the reason why you know, when you look at this water, it looks thick. It looks like the water is a kind of muddy. It's not muddy. It's part of it. And the problem is that sometimes when it happens and you ask the catfish, from, hey, this is, what, this is what I'm seeing. He said, no. He totally denied it. He said, no, that's not what happened. I always make sure that I feed one place and, no, you know, the, the, the results don't lie. So the management of the feeding is also a problem in this pond. I'm not there, but that's what I'm seeing. Then the water treatment is also a problem in this pond. How do you change your water? Then, like I said, there's an overstocking issue in this pond. If these three items are actually looked into very well, you will see that there will be an improvement in the pond. And like I told you, none of these fishes, once this is done, it stops dying. It looks like magic. So this is the reason why these catfishes in this pond are having this issue. And if they are done, everything stops immediately. So like I said, if you have your own problems, simply send it to me. When I look at it, I'll, I'm going to help you to stop these problems and use it to teach other people how to stop the same problems. And if you're having any problem about knowing how many you're supposed to stock in your pond, all you do is measure your length, the breadth, and the depth of your catfish pond. Send it to me. I'll be able to tell you how many fishes you're supposed to stock in that pond. And if there are other things, questions you have, kindly use the comment section. And until I come your way next time, my name is Emily from Noel Oge of Leros Farm. Keep farming. It's a